Hey, hi, this is Vivek and in this particular video, we're going to be talking about Burns Dilemma, which is a very interesting maths application idea. Now, this is something that we're going to decompose into five different parts and there are going to be five different videos and we're going to move gradually from easy to hard level problems in those series. Now, this is something which is related to coloring, counting of coloring stuff. And it's actually used in a lot of problems that comes up in regionals. I have seen a lot of decider questions of regionals being from this particular topic and hence it's very important. Also. In case you want to look into more such contents of comedy programming, don't forget to like and subscribe to this particular channel because we're going to have more such content on it. So do go ahead and press the bell icon and subscribe to the channel. Let's move into the next stuff, which is the main theorem. And it's very complicated stuff if you are not into too much of maths and if you have not read about group theory as such. So most probably you're going to not understand a lot of terms in whatever is written over here. And to be honest, to solve the problems that are there in competitive programming, you don't really need to know a lot of group theory and like even the stuff that is written over here, we're going to understand it from a different perspective, from an application point of view, and we're going to see how to actually solve questions related to it. Okay. But over here, there are terms like groups of fixed, like orbitals and there are, sorry, orbits and there are fixed elements. So we're going to make it a simple by just looking at an example and actually solving them. Okay. So let's look at uh, one particular question and try to understand what we want to do using this burn side lemma. Where are the, where actually the burn side lemma comes into help. So let's say there is this particular diagram, which is like, let's say uh, this um, six balls are kind of placed on six identical balls are placed onto a table and we want to find the number of ways the, to color the balls of the table. Okay. And we have two different colors. One is red and the and other is green, obviously. And we want to find the number of ways to color the six balls, right? Now, there is one particular restriction that we have to keep in mind over here that the colorings are same over rotation and reflection. Now, this is the main con constraint that Burnside Lemma helps us with. That if a particular diagram in this particular setup is rotated into another diagram, so they, those, two, those two diagrams are considered the same. So over here, if this diagram would have been unique and you cannot rotate it up, you, you just basically just have six places and you have two colors. So it would be two to the power six. But that is not correct in this case because if you, let's say, do some particular coloring such that it can be rotated into the other, then those two are counted the same. So all the 2 to the power 6 are not uh, like distinct. And we want to find the number of distinct ways which which can over which we have this restriction that two things are not distinct if they have they can be co like converted into one another by rotation or by reflection. So this is something that Burnside Lemma actually helps us with. And if you think you can actually count this without Burnside Lemma, I would encourage you to pause the video and try to think about how do you count this particular number without with this restriction that rotation and reflections uh, makes the elements same. Okay. So I hope you have tried it up if you want to, but I think since this is the first video, I don't expect you to know Burnside Lemma or if you know maybe how to apply them. So let's get into how we actually apply Burnside Lemma into these stuff. But before we move into that, let's take two examples. Let's say you have this particular diagram where this, this is, these threes are colored green, like this is green, green, green. And if you kind of rotate this diagram, right? Like this two green kind of shifts over to this side. And then the other green is over here in the opposite corner. So it's like this particular diagram can be rotated on this particular axis. And if you rotate it 120 degree, like this kind of comes to this end, then you see that these two diagrams and this goes to this position. These two diagrams are actually same. So if you rotate this by 120 degree, these two diagrams are exactly same, right? So these two are not distinct. These two are the same diagram coloring. So they would be counted as one coloring, right? Also, if you see this diagram and this diagram over here, if you kind of mirror this or reflect this about this particular line, then you kind of have this as same as this particular diagram. So again, these two are not distinct if you are thinking about coloring them, right? So if these are not same, like, like kind of same, if they are, if they are same, then tell me how many different actually exist, right? I mean, this can be rotated. These threes are kind of all same. So it's not as easy as it seems if you want to hand count them. So let's try to look at how Burnside Lemma kind of makes this very easy. So the first step in any solving any Burnside Lemma related question is to find the axis of rotations and reflections in a diagram. So over here, you can see that there is this diagram and let's try to find out first the rotation axis. So we are kind of having this like rotational symmetry at the, about this point and we can rotate the diagram by this, right? So there is this nice symmetrical like triangular kind of structure where we have all of these thing, three things aligned. And if we rotate it by either zero degree, which means we don't rotate it either, like 
in some sense let's forget about zero degree let's say 120 degree so if we rotate this by 120 degree then this ball is going to come to this particular place this is going to go to this particular place and so on into in the internal triangular position as well so in that case it's kind of making up the same diagram again right so if you rotate it by 120 degree you have the same diagram same for 240 degree if you see that if you do rotate it by 240 degree it's like rotating this into this position but it's also the similar way it, it's also something which behaves similarly right so these two are possible rotations by which you will get the same diagram in its own self and re by reflection you can see that there is this axis of reflection or it's mostly the symmetry position symmetry lines that you have to find in the diagram which works as reflection axes so about this if you rotate you get the same diagram uh, similarly for this kind of a diagram and there would be a line like this right so there are going to be these axes of reflection so this is three like axis of reflection right and there are from this this is the one rotational axis and you can have 120 degree rotation which leads to the same stuff 240 degree which leads to the same stuff and so on right so in any particular problem of Burnside lemma the first step would be to find the Rotation and reflection axis is depending upon the problem. In case the question says that you don't have to consider reflection, then don't consider the reflection axis. Just take the rotational axis. Okay. So in this case, you have one rotational axis with the same diagram, 120 degree rotated, one 240 degree rotate, rotated. And then there are three axes of reflection where you can reflect it and get the same diagram. So how many ways can you change the diagram, but the resultant is the same? That's what we are kind of finding out. Okay. So that's the step one. Next, we move on to step two, which is Identify the elements fixed by a G, which means let's say if you put if you make a particular move, okay, let's say you rotate it by 120 degree or 240 degree altogether, then what what are the elements that get fixed? So let's let's try and see what this statement means, okay? So let's say we have this particular element and we take this axis of symmetry and we rotate it by zero degree, right? Which means we don't rotate it. So in that sense this element is going to remain over here this element is going to remain over here and this element is going to remain in its own place and everything is going to remain in its own place right no matter how many times we rotate by one by zero degree so in that case we have all of the uh, diag all of the balls in its own place itself and there is no two superposition that is happening so there are six different six different ball places and everything is going to be remaining at its own place no matter how many times we apply the zero degree right rotation so all of these positions will count and there are six different elements in this particular case. Let's think about this particular uh, diagram and we have like, let's say this center of center and we rotate it by 120 degree, right? Let's say we rotate it by 120 degree. So in this case, if we rotate it 120 degree once, then this, let's say this particular ball will come to this place, right? And if we rotate it by another 120 degree, it will come to this place. Okay. So what we need to actually find is if we can do the this rotation like whatever rotation number we are kind of considering right now the axis of rotation and the actual like g which is the particular group that we are kind of finding out right now is using the 120 degree rotation is how many elements are kind of going into the same group over here into the same kind of position altogether so these are the fixed set that you're finding out so you have these two elements are same these two elements are same this 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 element are same as this in this 120 degree positioning and then again these three positions are going to be same because you can rotate one into the other so there are essentially two different fixed elements that are there the size of the set of fixed elements is this two right which is what we want to find and then in this case let's say let's consider like over here as 120 sorry uh, the reflection axis so in this case this ball remains at its own place okay and then uh, this ball and this ball is going to be the same because you can reflect it into this one. Uh, then we have uh, this ball as same as this ball because it can reflect into this one. And then we have another ball which is at this place which is going to be reflected into itself. So there are four different positions. There are four different positions into it all together, right? So for every different kind of axis and different kind of moves that you find out. So you find out how many of the elements become same if you can do that unlimited number of times, right? So if you rotate it zero number of time, zero degree by even unlimited number of times, all of them are dis different. If you rotate it by 120 degree, these three become same. These three become same, right? If you if you reflect it by this line, this remains the same. This remains the same. Uh, these two become the same. These two become the same, right? So you have to you need to find for different kind of like oper uh, uh, axes that you found and different operations that you found. How many of them are kind of making 
different sets of elements be becoming equal and then what is the size of the total number of distinct elements that are there right so that is what we kind of that is what we find out in portions of burnside lemma in this case it's count for zero degree it's six two four now quick exercise think about the question where we have the same diagram and you rotate it by 120 degree that's a really interesting thing to think about if you rotate it by 120 degree so this one will become this if you rotate it once and if you rotate it again then this becomes this right and then if you rotate one this becomes this so again these three are actually same and similarly by the same logic these three are also going to be same okay so in case of 240 degree rotation we also have the similar kind of a logistic like this one we have again the same three steps process and the whole three outer uh, balls are going to become equal and the three inner balls are going to become equal right so this is exactly going to be the similar to 120 degree okay this is how you find the elements that are fixed by a particular group and then we finally put the formula that is there for burnside lemma so for zero degree we know that there are one two three four five six there are about this axis if you rotate it by zero degree nothing changes so all of them are distinct like nothing kind of get merged with other so all of them are distinct so each position has a two choice so you you have a two to the power six total number of choices for this rotation plus if you rotate it by 120 degree then this becomes equal to this this becomes equal to this okay and then this becomes equal to this and this becomes equal to this so there are if you color this with let's say some green then you are kind of coloring this one with green as well if you want to count the number of things that are kind of symmetric with 120 degree and so on so this is going to be two different positions that you have to decide the color for and the rest all would be decided by its own so what we do is we do 2 to the power let's say uh, two positions and that is the total number of choice you have after that if you rotate it by 120 degree rest all positions will get fixed so this is what we get over here for the, this particular formula and again if you do it for 240 degree this again becomes equal to this and this becomes equal to this and then comes back so it's is the same as the 120 degree rotation so we will multiply this with two okay and then finally we have this reflection axis which there are three of three such of this reflection axis and so we will multiply it with three and then the total number over there is going to be equal to one so let's let's kind of color them up this is going to be one this is going to be two this is going to be three this is going to be four so there are four different positions which are same if you have reflection allowed onto the diagram so we have four two to the power four so every position has two choices there are four such positions so two to the power four so we put two to the power four over here and then we divided by the total number of groups that were there so which was nothing but zero degree 120 degree 240 degree reflection about this reflection about this reflection about this so there are six total groups over here and that's what we divided by so what we write is 2 to the power 6 2 to the power 2 into 2 plus 3 into 2 to the power 4 by 6 which is which comes out to be 2 to the power 6 is going to be equal to 64 plus this is 2 to the power 3 8 plus 3 into uh, 2 to the power 4 that is going to be equal to 2 to the power 4 is nothing but 16 16 3 is a 48 so this is this divided by 6 which is going to come out to be this is going to be 56 120 by 6 i suppose right so this is going to be 56 plus 64 120 by 6 which is equal to nothing but 20 so there are exactly 20 different colorings that are possible of this diagram with this particular setup right and that's a very neat number so there are 20 different diagrams that you can kind of actually plot up i'm not really showing that up over here you can kind of try if you want to but this is how Burnside lemma actually works. It directly gives you this number 20, which would have been very difficult if you had to count it manually, right? I mean, think about trying all the shapes and then kind of seeing whether some of them is becoming equal to the other after rotation and all. It's really difficult and Burnside lemma makes it very easy. And that's where the like true power of this lemma lies in. Any coloring with rotations and things kind of considered the same is actually a problem of Burnside lemma in most cases, okay? So if we see the different steps that we did was nothing but to act, like identify the axis of rotation, right? We have to identify the axis of rotation or reflection according to the problem. In this question, there was both rotation and reflection. So we had to do both. Next, we have this step where we, for every rotational group or a reflection group, we kind of find out the fixed element set that is there for that. Like uh, if you rotate it by that particular group, 
then which all elements become the same right and for each of those you have only a single choice like if you fix one of them the others are going to be have the have the same colors that's what we are kind of having over here if you understand it that way and then put the formula for counting that for each group you kind of put in the the number of ways to color them and then add it up divide by 6 and that's where it gives you the full formula so this is the full formula if you go back to the main burnside lemma theorem the summation that we wrote on the on the numerator was this particular term over here okay this xg that we have written over here that for this particular element what is the total number of ways there are and then this g is the number of groups that are there this is a finite group right so in in case of infinite groups i think this kind of shifts to this side and you can look into the proofs of these on wikipedia but i'm not going into too much of maths because you will never require that to solve questions and uh, and we need to find the number of orbits that are there let's um, let's not get into the terms of orbits and groups and stuff so this is what we kind of do with burnside lemma questions and that's pretty much what we do so a quick recap we found out the axis of rotations which was this center over here kind of coming out of the board and then you can rotate it by 0 degree 120 degree and 240 degree for all of them you get the same stuff then there is the axis of reflection where you rotate it by like 180 degree there is a 180 degree rotation a reflection across this and then uh, there are these stuff so there are these three axes and there are these three different rotations that creates different group sets and then you kind of count the number of elements that have fixed elements fixed set out of those groups and then you color each of the fixed sets and then rest all things get colored automatically and then you do that so this this is what we actually do in any burnside lemma problem that you have to find out which elements become same and then color one of them rest of them gets colored automatically so find out the number of unique elements that are there and then you are done with the problem more or less okay so quickly recapping the three different steps identify the axis of rotations and reflection identify the elements fixed by a particular g which kind of are free and then based on that rest all becomes fixed and then put the formula by for counting for each group like you just find out the number of uh, like different like just number of ways to color for that particular group and then you just sum them up divide by total number of groups that's what we do at the end okay that's the basic burnside lemma formula so that's how you solve burnside lemma problems and this is just first example don't get worried if you if you could not understand it in case you want to re like go through it again go back watch into it again and uh, this is something we'll actually uh, we'll take up in the next video as well with another problem where you get more sense of what we are actually doing okay and in the next problem we're going to take this particular problem from cscs which is counting grids which is again a problem of burnside lemma and something similar to this problem also came up in one of the icbc regionals i'm going to link to those all the problems that are there in this whole series in the descriptions of all the videos so you can go through those problems if you want to also this is going to be more like a watch and kind of think about problems so make sure that you when you look at the problems in each of the videos try to think okay how would you how would i do that using burnside lemma before you actually look into the solution so that you kind of get the whole idea even more clear right so this is going to be all for this particular video in the next few videos we're going to be seeing more such applications so stay tuned watch the next video and see you there bye bye also before we leave on like and subscribe as i said a lot of people who watch the vid channel doesn't really subscribe so go ahead and subscribe the channel okay hello bye bye see you in the next one